Hello and welcome. My name is Sue Wilding from the MD membership team. And today, as Lions, we have the greatest challenge, the challenge to grow, to start new clubs and new club branches. Now, please remember, this is only an introduction. There's much we have to discuss and there's much we have to learn. Because for many lions, this is outside of our experience. We're not used to starting new clubs. And so we have a lot of questions. What does that mean? How do we do that? What do we need? Who will help us? What if it goes wrong? Will it be difficult? Will it be a threat? How will it help our club? Can we afford it? We have lots of questions and we have to explore where we're going with starting new clubs. But all I would like to do now is to start the conversation. Start and then build the conversation and the learning around this topic. I'll be honest with you, doing what we're doing this week hasn't been easy for me. It certainly would have been easy to have done nothing. I could have quite easily stayed in my comfort zone where I would feel very comfortable at home and safe and in control of what's going on as much as anyone can be at this stage in a terrible situation. But sometimes we can't stay in our comfort zone and we have to take a risk and step out and outside a comfort zone, it starts to get a little fearsome, a little frightening. We start to lose our confidence, our self-confidence. We sometimes find excuses for not doing something because we're not comfortable about it. And we worry about what other people think. Suppose it goes wrong. Suppose it all falls flat on its face. Suppose people think I'm really daft for even trying. But this week I feel I've kind of stepped out of my comfort zone and through my fear zone and I'm into learning. And I hope that I'm taking some of you with me into learning about some of our challenges and some of our problems that we face as lions. That we will think about the new skills we need to acquire and some of that we are learning already and acquiring already. And we will find if we step out of our comfort zone that it will extend and we will be comfortable with learning how to adapt and adopt new ways. And if we can move out of that zone where we're learning, then we can start to grow. We can find our purpose as lions. We can live the dreams that we have for growing lions and serving our communities. We can set new goals of what we hope to achieve and we can face into our objectives, we can achieve what we want. Lions serving in all of our communities. We won't grow if we stay in our comfort zone. We've got to be prepared to take a risk to feel a bit awkward if it goes wrong, a bit uncomfortable when we try something new, but we've got to give it a try. We've got to give it a try because. Because there are people in communities where there is no Lions Club. I look at Facebook, I look at what's going on in the country and I see fantastic work by Lions Clubs. People volunteering their time at vaccine centres, people helping with prescriptions, helping with food banks, amazing stuff. And I think to myself, 
what about those communities where there is no Lions Club? Who is helping them? And those communities where perhaps there was a Lions Club once upon a time, but it is no longer there. Could we put a Lions Club where one used to be? If we look at starting new clubs, then we can look at new ideas and new styles of clubs. We can move away from what we do as traditional Lions and try something different. And those who want to stay traditional can do so. We can complement each other because we are all about diversity. Not everything that's new is good, but not everything that is traditional needs to stay that way. So we can encourage diversity by attracting new members who've got different backgrounds, different lifestyles, and that will enliven and bring interest to what we do as lions as a whole. It will refresh and enthuse our current members. Doing something new, doing something different, meeting new people is very, very refreshing, very, very enthusing and gives us new energies and new directions perhaps to think about. We know that we need to bring on new leaders. Those amongst us who have been lions for very, very many years are hugely respected. And we don't want to see any lion turn round and walk away and feel that they are leaving the organisation weaker rather than stronger. We need to build a legacy that we can hand on to the next generation, where we have young, keen, skilled, talented people who will take lions clubs forward. And we want to keep our clubs lively, relevant, vibrant as volunteer service organisations. We need in every country around the world, but particularly in the British Isles, to be keeping Lions Clubs relevant to what is going on in modern society. So a simple summary of a much more complicated picture of how to start a new club. There are guides out there which you can access online, which will help you to feed, read some of the detail and understand more about what this involves. But the very basics are that to start a new club, LCI asks you to find 20 members. When anyone joins a Lions Club, an existing club or a new club, every new member incurs a joining fee. And the joining fee at the moment per new member is 35 American dollars. Currently, it's actually suspended until the summer, until the end of this Lions year. A very good reason to be out there recruiting while there is no joining fee. A new club needs a Lions Club to sponsor it, or indeed districts can, but it's actually much better if a Lions Club can take a new club under its wing and mentor and shelter and help it to form. A new club needs the approval of a, a district governor. I would hate to think there was any district governor that wouldn't approve of the starting of a new club. And every new club has to be approved by Lions Clubs International. They have to have an application made to them and they approve and grant a charter. A new club can have two guiding lions. Two is a good number to have, you don't need more than two. But two guiding lions to support and help a new club to develop. And as always, I put on the bottom there a little bit of paperwork. There's always forms to fill in, there's always things to do, and I'm, probably it's not paperwork these days, it's online completion of forms, but I think you get the gist of what I mean. So guiding lions are kind of important in this process 
because they are the ones who will help the club as it develops over its first couple of years. And you may have heard guiding lines talked about, because to me, sometimes think about it, I think, you know, it's a bit of a chicken and an egg situation. What do you actually do? Do you start a new club and then find two people who will be guiding lions? Or do you train up a bank of guiding lions, people who are prepared to help new clubs, and then you go out and form the new clubs? Or is it a, a sort of working in tandem on both of those things? A guiding lion is someone who's followed the guiding lion program. It's a set training course, and if you complete it, it takes well, less than a day probably, with perhaps a little bit of pre-reading if you're um, willing to actually do that and, and gen up on it before you go to the training with the purpose of assisting clubs that are newly chartered. Assigned for two years to work with that club, attend meetings, report back by the district governor by whom they are appointed on how the club is progressing. But Guiding Lions can do more than assist a chartered club. They can actually assist any club because the guiding lion training takes us through what is needed to run any club. What's the main roles of the president? What does the treasurer need to make, bear in mind? What, what's the secretary's role? Those things are quite useful as a reminder or for some training for anyone who's never done that role before, but has got experience within the club. And by doing that training, it's a good little refresher course and it builds that conversation because as people become interested in how clubs should be run and interested in becoming guiding lions, they're talking and they're building the conversation around the purpose of a guiding lion and the supportive nature of that program. And then they can perhaps help some of the clubs who need a little bit more input until such time as we look at chartering more clubs around our districts. There are things that will need to be thought about in starting a new club. Resources are going to be important and there's whole conversations around the issues around uh, funding and how this is all achieved. But this Guiding Lion program is something that I think a lot of lions could benefit from trying. What about a club branch and how is that different to a full club? I think if we take the branch analogy and we think of a club as like a tree that has strong roots in its community and has grown and developed and become known and trusted, once it gets to that point where it can extend, it can extend itself into local communities nearby, into other areas where there are no longer Lions Clubs or where there never has been a Lions Club and start to serve and to support other communities and provide and increase the service impact that Lions have. Starting a new club requires five people. Five people who would like to serve their community can be more, of course, but five is the minimum. A group of five people, maybe five friends, five people with the same hobby, five people helping at the moment at a food bank, five people helping with the vaccines at the moment who want to keep up that role but want to actually volunteer in a slightly different way. Five people who want to start a club branch as a part of a Lions Club. They would be members of the parent club but they would also run their own branch as well. They too would pay a joining fee, $35, or there would be an arrangement that would need to be discussed about how that was going to be dealt with. There would be a sponsoring club. And as I say, the five members belong to the club branch, but they're also members of the sponsoring club at the same time. So they can go to their sponsoring clubs meetings, for example, and see how things are done by other clubs and their parent club. Someone from the parent club 
would take on the role of liaising with the branch. They would keep the watch over the branch, go to its meetings, help it define its service objectives, help it with any questions that people have got, and just generally help them structure themselves as a small branch of Alliance Club. The district governor would need to know that this was happening. And I always put on there, as I said, a little bit of paperwork. Something would need to be registered to ensure that that branch is available and visible. And those members are recorded on our database that we call my LCI. But the club branch very much mirrors a club, although it's smaller. They will have elections and elect their own president, their own secretary, their treasurer. They may not have their own bank account, but they will work as an income and outgoing expenditure type of accounts and make sure that they are financially careful. They will choose their own PR and do their own PR and they will sort out their own projects that they would like to do. And they will sort out their own committees that they would like to have and do things their way. Because you see, there is no one size fits all in Lions Clubs. If you look at the different styles of Lions Clubs that there are, I should imagine most of us would say we belong to a fairly traditional club. A club that's set down on, on lines that perhaps have been pertaining for very many years, where you have a set meeting place, a set agenda, a set format, the sort of, as I say, the traditional style of Lions Club that many of us know and most of us love. But there are other ways to run a Lions Club. On this circle, we can see, for example, campus clubs. Campus clubs, as the name suggests, are clubs in universities, places of higher education, over 18s, who become Lions, but student members, and maybe work and serve on their campus with other students doing the volunteer work that they feel is relevant to them. Again, guided by a sponsoring club and with the district there to help and support them. There are changes coming from uh, International for Lioness Clubs and that is working its way out. So I won't go into that one, but there are people who have said to me, can I mention Leo Clubs? Now Leo Clubs are slightly different because they are pretty much a sort of project of a Lions Club. They come under our youth heading. But Leo clubs are very, very important. And again, it's something as a multiple district, perhaps we could look at promoting a bit more, bringing young people into volunteering, into community service. It's not an easy job to have a Leo club. My own club has had one for about 11 years now. And they need nurturing and advice and support. But many Leos grow up to become lion volunteers, lion members in the future. And if they've had a good experience when they're a teenager of working and volunteering with lions as Leos, then lions will be their natural home when they look to volunteer as adults. There's a growing number of virtual clubs, a new possibility that's becoming even more available to us. To be able to meet online, to be able to plan online, hold committee meetings online, hold socials online, things that perhaps a year ago or even longer we would never have thought we could do, we're finding we can do. And so it might suit some people's lifestyle that instead of having a traditional Lions Club, they have one that operates an awful lot through the medium of the internet as a virtual Lions Club. And perhaps they only get together once or twice a year to get to know each other. Or perhaps they do their service in their own hometown and volunteer alongside a Lions Club nearby as a friend of that Lions Club, but a member of the virtual club. There are so many permutations you see these days. And then speciality clubs. That's almost a topic in itself. 
the idea of a speciality club is that there are people who might have a particular hobby or interest or profession or lifestyle that links them all together. It could be, here I'm thinking off the top of my head really, but it could be a group of cyclists who like going on sponsored cycles and raising funds that way. It might be a group of mums who like doing things for young children. It could be a group of newly retired professional people. It could be a club in a workplace. There are a load of different styles of speciality clubs and I, I actually think that it's, that's worth looking at, as I say, in entirety on its own. And then of course we have the club branch as a way of a traditional club extending out and starting something new, but not having to wait until you've gathered 20 people together. So we need to think about how things could be different. We need to think about people who want to volunteer around a theme. Maybe form a breakfast club. Why do we always have to meet in the evenings? Why not have a Lions Club that meets at breakfast time? I look at my, uh, young, fa my young family and they are busy people all week. But they often meet up with their friends over brunch at the weekends. And it's becoming quite a big thing to go out for breakfast. Why do we have to meet in the evening when people have busy lives and kids to look after and meals to cook? We need to be creative and with starting new clubs, they can decide on their own meeting places, styles, formats, service projects, everything that they want to do that they think is right for them because they will come with new interests and new passions that will help us to stay vibrant and lively. We have to make clubs that are modern and relevant to modern society. We have to think about the diversity. We have to think about younger people. We have to think about what is relevant in this day and age. So we need to think about new clubs. We have to think about how those new clubs will run in new styles and in new ways and how we will be able then to grow our service through new clubs and new club branches. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for listening.